So Bob, thanks so much for joining us today in another episode of Executive Insights. For the people listening, why don't you introduce yourself and uh, the company you work for? You bet. Hey, Kevin, first of all, thanks for the uh, opportunity and definitely appreciate the partnership with Schneider. Uh, we've had a longstanding relationship and we very much appreciate it. So I'm Bob Olwig. I'm Vice President of Corporate Business Development at Worldwide. Uh, been with the company almost 25 years, and I lead our global strategic partnerships as well as our global marketing for the company. And I've had a few different roles uh, in at, at Worldwide, uh, primarily in sales and business development, but have also led our technical teams and, and for a short stint, led our IT department. Um, Worldwide is a third dollar solution provider. Uh, headquartered here in St. Louis, but uh, we have offices around the globe. And, um, you know, we've been specializing in a number of different areas for a number of years, but uh, in the past dozen years or so, we've really specialized in um, security transformation, application development, and really something that's absolutely accelerated because of COVID, uh, digital transformation. We have about 8,000 employees around the globe, and it's a uh, it's all backed by um, uh, the Advanced Technology Center, which is an investment that we made to help customers evaluate technology and then a global supply chain that helps us deploy that technology quickly and cost effectively. So that's, uh, that's who Worldwide is, Kevin. Yeah, well, that's great. And, you know, I, I, we'll, we'll get to the Advanced Technology Center and some of those things that you're doing in a second. But, it, you know, I know you have a history before WWT. You and I spoke some, and uh, you, yeah. know, we, you and I started talking about the uh, history of distributed IT and centralizing and re-centralizing and then decentralizing. You know, why don't you kind of go through some of your perspective on that? Because I think it's really interesting in the context of edge computing and some of the trends we're talking of talking about today in the industry. Yeah, definitely. I was thinking about this, Kevin, in our prep call uh, last week that I had been in the industry for over 35 years and I got my start as a programmer at McDonnell Douglas and the programming was all done on IBM mainframes, a very centralized environment. And during my tenure there, um, we started to utilize uh, many computers uh, from Digital Equipment Corporation. And in fact, I went from McDonnell Douglas to uh, Digital Equipment Corporation that I know you're familiar with as well. And that was the era going from centralized mainframes to distributed departmental solutions um, that digital did really well with, um, actually starting with PDP 11s and then moving into the VAX lines and so forth. And I stayed with digital for about eight years or so. And during that time, the era of client server started to occur. So you had this kind of oscillation from mainframe to departmental to client server computing. And that was pretty fascinating. And I think we talked a bit about this. It's, it has everything to do with, I think, Moore's law and just the you know, insatiable growth of compute that makes it easier and easier for us to provide better experiences for customers or our employees. Um, and, and oftentimes that involves that compute at the edge, just like many computers provided that compute at, at the departmental edge, PCs provided that compute at the personal uh, edge. And, and, and then you had uh, the, the kind of the re-centralization of it with uh, the onslaught of the internet and, and web servers and web scale um, solutions and so forth where the browser became the edge, but a lot of the compute was back on the servers and so forth. And then finally, uh, I don't know how many phases I've gone through here, Kevin, but I think finally we're now a little bit in the era of apps where the edge is at the phone. And we all know what that's done to this world. And, and it's also, I think also um, raised the bar in terms of expectations from end users in terms of ease and and so forth. And I know we'll talk a little bit more about edge computing and what that opportunity presents for both Schneider and, and worldwide and for our customers. Yeah, so to answer your question, so I've got you from mainframes to decentralizing to mini. We continue to decentralize in client server, that's three. Fourth is we re-centralize back into the cloud, right? what we call cloud computing. Then you're, then you're saying the fifth, we're in the fifth phase now of everything being on the phone. 
And then again, we may have this future of edge computing. So maybe it's six, if I counted. Yeah, I, I, think, you know, I think you know, so. Yeah, give yeah. or take. Give or take, something like that. So, you know, and uh, you know, in that, you, you tell me a little bit about, you know, as we've gone through these different transitions, there's a lot of discussion about different companies have used different terms, composable, compute, and different pieces. But kind of, you know, in, share with me kind of your view about the, I think the term you've used is disaggregation that's occurred inside the industry. Well, yeah, Kevin, what, what we've observed, and especially with the large global service providers that um, we, we, ha we provide a tremendous amount of services around um, upfront lab services and helping them design solutions through our global supply chain and deploying those solutions. But um, as, as you know, um, large enterprises, including global service providers, have been on a path towards disaggregation, you know, separating out the hardware and the software. And the idea of decomposing the hardware from the software allows them to take advantage of more commodity type storage and servers and, and, and compute technology um, with the hopes of absolutely lowering their costs. And um, that, I think that served a, a lot of companies very well. Um, this is a software defined world that we live in. The APIs now exist, the development environments exist that make it easier for applications and software to be written. Um, it certainly has not, uh, it, it certainly has expanded not only from the apps that are written, but also the control planes and the operating system software that companies use to, to manage their infrastructure. So um, while the disaggregation has occurred, um, it's also caused some complexity for our customers because while they're getting the benefit of decomposing and separating out the hardware from the software, they realize that there were benefits to buying solutions that were completely integrated together. It, it's why all of the big OEMs like the, the uh, Dell computer and Dell Technologies and HPE and Cisco, you know, did a very good job of creating complete solutions where the hardware and software were very much integrated together. And now that customers have se separated that out, they are looking for someone, either they have to do it themselves internally in terms of integrating things back together, or they're looking for solution providers like a worldwide technology that can help them design the solutions in a disaggregated way that gives them the flexibility of sourcing the hardware and software separately, but then also work with someone like a worldwide where we can help them design those solutions and test them out in our labs or in our advanced technology center so that they know that they're actually going to work um, when they put things back together again. So we, we like to think of what we're doing is almost like a next generation factory where um, we're not just a factory manufacturing our own SKUs or our own products, but we're a factory that is assembling components from multiple OEMs, the best of breed technologies from multiple OEMs, and we're re-aggregating the hardware and software together and in a way that makes it easy for our, our customers, whether they're large service providers or enterprise customers like the large banks and so forth, to um, test, evaluate, and then deploy that technology. Um, we, we couple our advanced technology center with another capability that we call our integration uh, technology centers. And these are really our next-gen factories where we can produce um, complete solutions in mass, and we can deploy these technology solutions anywhere around the world. Okay, so, all right, so you just went through a lot of very complicated topics. Let's deconstruct this a little bit one by one, if you don't mind. So first of all, we have the disaggregation of uh, software defined, where, you know, hey, if I can get to commodity hardware, and then I can mix and match, and I can get a, a better solution at a lower cost. That's been the promise of that. Is Did I understand that correctly, right? Yes. So it's kind of similar, like we went from mainframes to client PC. That was part of the promise at that time was, hey, if you, you, know, you can go to more of a commodity OS, you don't have to be locked into one vendor, you can write different applications. Is, it a, is that a similar analogy? Thanks. I think so. I think so. And I think you see that at a, at a bigger scale in many large enterprises that um, where x86 has been commoditized, where customers, frankly, can work with multiple providers of that server technology. And I think that has allowed them to help lower their cost, but because it's standards-based and x86-based, um, they know that it's gonna work with the rest of the stack. 
Okay. And then you, you kind of touched on it, like they know it's going to work with the rest of the stack, but how do you know for sure for your specific implementation, right? And so, yeah. so tell me more about the, the testing, the advanced technology center, I think you called it, and the problem that's solving. Because if I understood you correctly, what you're saying is, hey, it's great that we've got, the, we've disaggregated things, but then at some point to get a solution, I have to re-aggregate it and verify whether that works. So, so is exactly. that the type of capability that you, you're, you're alluding to when you say advanced technology centers? Tell us some more about that, right? Yeah, it, our advanced technology center is a set of physical labs that we've created. Uh, they're primarily housed in, in St. Louis in four different data centers. We have about 400 racks of equipment that are completely dedicated to uh, customer environments where we help them design build, evaluate, and ultimately test and ensure that the technology and the software and the hardware are all going to work together. Um, we do this for large service providers, large global financial uh, services companies, um, where they, they, through their strategy of trying to disaggregate, they do need it all pulled back together. And that, that's a key component that we do for them. Um, again, not unlike what a manufacturer is doing in terms of designing a product from start to finish. We're just designing products that are from multiple manufacturers or multiple OEMs that following standards, we can pull those all back together. Now, what we do is through our engineering talent is that we have engineers that can uh, architect these solutions in a way and create the test plans and the um, supportability capabilities that, that are needed after the, the solution gets deployed out into the field. So um, not only do we help them test it, but we actually help them deploy it. And then, uh, Kevin, we talked a little bit about this last week. You know, we are seeing customers wanting to consume that technology more as a service and companies like Worldwide, solution providers like Worldwide, providing a remote uh, managed service capabilities for, for ongoing uh, maintenance and support. And I want to come back to that remote monitoring in a second, right? But so, so you're actually, the Advanced Technology Center is testing. So you can pull in this, you know, help, help a customer pull it in and test it. But then you're also seeing a trend where they, are customers asking you to have that deployed as a, as a complete system? Or are they assembling that on site? No, we, we actually will do the uh, complete assembly in our integration technology centers. We have about 4 million uh, square feet of integration and distribution center capability around the world. We have very sophisticated uh, engineering and tech capabilities where we're like a, a, a manufacturing facility where we're designing and building and implementing these capabilities. Um, we go so far, Kevin, even to create custom crating so that we can configure complete racks of capability, whether it's storage, compute, the networking, layering on all the software. We fully test it, burn it in, and instead of disaggregating it, and then shipping it piece parts and having the customer pull it back together, we actually work with the manufacturers and warranty those technologies and components to work together so that we can ship them in, in custom crates to large data centers or web scalers around the world. Yeah, well, and this is an area that we've started working with you on, right, is, is how do I actually, if, I, if the customer's demanding that it gets shipped as a complete solution, how do I ship it and make sure that it doesn't violate the warranty? Because we've had cases in the past where an IT provider would say, well, if you ship that in, unless, if you ship that in a rack, then, hey, I, I, we're not accepting any warranty claims, right? So that's something that I think you and I both had to work through, or both our companies anyway, have had to work through, yeah. Exactly, Kevin, and I would say it speaks a little bit to our partnership, you know, the longstanding partnership that, um, you know, we are able to work out those special conditions where we need to help each other from a warranty uh, and ensuring that we're meeting the high quality standards that Schneider has within our own labs and that we're, um, doing the right thing for our customers to keep the cost low in shipping the product, but ensuring that it's going to work uh, when it arrives on site. Yeah, and so, you know, we've been big believers in, you know, what we call reference designs, right? So we we try to help customers along this path of this complexity of re-aggregating that which was disaggregated, so to speak, you know, and uh, we've worked with you actually on reference designs where you can make, you know, at least give somebody a starting point to work from, if not the final product, but a starting point. Is that something that uh, you know you guys are using on a regular basis with other players in the industry? Is that a trend that you think will continue? Because certainly we're big believers, but I'm curious about your perspective. 
Yeah, I, I think that, you know, these reference architectures have been around for quite some time. They've come in different flavors going all the way back to V blocks from VCE to flex pods between Cisco and NetApp uh, and VMware. Uh, and, and I think worldwide, as has other solution providers, have always played a role of being the aggregator of those different components. And, you know, more often than not, it, it, it isn't just about the computer, the storage, or even the networking. There's often other applications and operating systems and virtualization software and monitoring software that needs to always go into these, you know, turnkey solutions and so forth. So. I think these, uh, I think this this notion of reference architectures have been around for quite some time. I think what's different though is the degree of disaggregation that's occurred, and the the fact that our customers want an integrator like a worldwide to be responsible for this reaggregation, rather than relying on the traditional OEMs to do that. I think they value the fact that worldwide as a as a solution provider to hundreds of different manufacturers, I think they realize that we have the breadth and reach to work with the best in, best in class um, uh, partners, and we can help the customer evaluate what makes sense for their particular use case. And so we can help them, you know, all the way from the design through the, the, the evaluation of the components working together. In fact, Kevin, I think what's unique about Worldwide is that um, we don't we don't do it. You know, the customer just doesn't turn the keys over to worldwide to go test something. Um, our our best collaboration is when we're working shoulder to shoulder with our customers, engineers. I mean, if you think about it, we're working with some of the brightest um, engineers and architects from our customers who who are running some of the largest IT shops in the world, and we get to work collaboratively with them in our labs. Now, lately, we've been doing that more virtually with yeah. COVID, and, and fortunately, we have virtualized the Advanced Technology Center that allows our customers from anywhere in the world to work with us. But we take it a step further, and we work very collaboratively with our OEM partners like Schneider to work, again, shoulder to shoulder to shoulder in designing and testing these solutions. Yeah, and if, if you think about it, in order to make a robust, whether, you know, whether it's in the, you know, core data center and an edge solution in order to make sure you've got a robust solution that you can monitor, you know, it takes that kind of collaboration from an ecosystem to make that work. And it's, it's in my view anyway, it's something that has to make, you know, we need to think about the ecosystem differently if we're going to raise the reliability of the edge. However you might define the edge is that that's exactly. a, it's a combination of infrastructure and environment as well as the hard, the IT hardware, software, applications. How does all of that come together? I think uh, you, you said the operative word there, Kevin, ecosystems. Uh, I, I believe our customers are looking for their technology partners to be more collaborative in, in working together now more than ever. Obviously that trend towards commoditization and disaggregation is kind of a forcing function that the customer, again, needs us as their solution providers to work together. I think uh, Schneider has a great track record of the ecosystem that you've created um, with your partners, and and you help facilitate us in terms of designing those solutions. You you actually create your own reference architectures that we can take advantage of. Well, that's great. Thank you for the for the compliments. And uh, so I want to go back to you. Kind of touched on this earlier, and I, you know, but you talked about monitoring software, and customers want to see things as a service. Dive a little deeper into that. What's your perspective on? You know, is that something that, you know, our customers not only now going to you, hey, help me test the solution, help me deliver the solution, but geez, it seems like a, not a big step to go and say, why don't you kind of help me manage it? And is that something, yeah, a trend I, that you see? Yeah, absolutely. I think managed services has been around for quite some time where uh, customers have decided to, you know, outsource some of that remote monitoring and, and support and so forth, which makes a lot of sense. I think what is accelerating that today is the multi-cloud world that we live in and the fact that many of our customers are actually to consume IT as a service. And when it's consumed as a service, it's kind of um, integral that the remote monitoring or the monitoring and support capabilities is built into that service, uh, service capability. So 
Um, that's what we're really seeing, Kevin, is that that notion that customers are now, um, you know, almost demanding it as part of the consumption models that they're uh, they're wanting from us. Um, now, the other thing that's happening is that that decentralization again that's occurring. Um, it's being brought on by, I would say, the opportunities that new technologies are presenting. Things like 5G, um, just a tremendous amount of opportunity and promise that 5G holds. But a lot of the keys to success for 5G is that you have um, a sufficient amount of computing power at the edge. Um, and that's where things like mobile edge computing is coming into play. And, and this is where it's a, a wonderful uh, service and capability that Schneider and Worldwide can provide to our customers. Because as you can imagine, as you're pushing that compute out to the mobile edge, you're creating many data centers um, that need to be stood up or enhancing the service provider's existing infrastructure to be very robust in providing that mobile edge computing capability. So it opens the door to, um, you know, uh, decentralized, uh, complete data center solutions that companies like Schneider provides that we work with very closely. Um, it also provides an opportunity for worldwide to um, provide that remote monitoring capability within those micro data centers or those data centers that are at the edge. So for us, it's a it's a wonderful opportunity to even expand even more uh, what we do for our customers. And I can tell you, we've made a significant investment on our side where we're really trying to think about like mobile edge, 5G, you know, we've really re re had to rethink about our software, making it much more open, having more open APIs so it can integrate in with more platforms as well as we've thought really about our services and how do you rethink services for these very small environments, which, uh, you know, is really a much different type of business for us than it was than uh, maybe our traditional business. So, and, and Kevin, uh, if I might share an example, though, that uh, we're working with an airport uh, with uh, Schneider together where we're leveraging your your software backplane and through worldwide application development services and our knowledge of APIs and so forth, we're integrating um, what, what I would traditionally say would be like building management system, um, yeah. sensors and doors and air conditioning and, and things like that, HVAC. And we're leveraging kind of your backplane, which um, you know traditionally would be more in the IT space, but I, but I think this is what you and I talked about that convergence of OT and IT coming together. And for worldwide, it's a wonderful opportunity to extend our breadth of services and capabilities to, to, to what customers really need. You know, our customers don't draw a line between, you know, their networking any longer between IT and OT, the operational side of things and the information technology side of things. They're, they're wanting a converged network. Um, now they want a converged network that's secure and reliable, and, and that's where we come into play. Just as OT has come on to the standard IT network, that's really introducing all sorts of you know security concerns and manageability concerns, and really it's opened up a lot of opportunities, but it's introduced some complexity as well. So, so I have one last question for you. I want to want to hit on though is that uh, you know if you, there's a lot of you know, the pandemic has generated, obviously, a lot of changes for everybody. But one of the things I'm interested in is how IT might be used in order to help us, uh, not only through the pandemic, but, you know, how it might change fundamentally some of the, some of the capabilities of uh, coming into an office building and how we operate. Is there anything that WWT is working on that, uh, that you've seen where there's a new opportunity for IT that maybe we didn't, didn't may, wouldn't have thought of in the past? No, it's a Good question. And well, first of all, there is the reliance on IT more than ever just to support the basic blocking and tackling that our customers uh, need to have for their remote workers. I mean, many of us woke up very almost overnight realizing that we now need to support um, instead of a few thousand remote workers, we now need to support tens of thousands of remote workers. So I think uh, I wanted to say hats off to the IT professionals out there. They're, they're a bit on the front line themselves in terms of providing that capability and not only providing that capability um, in, a, in a reliable way, but also in a secure way. You mentioned uh, the fact that, you know, in the OTIT world, it, it somewhat opened up the attack surface, so to speak. 
And certainly um, we know that the incidence of cyber attacks has increased dramatically with COVID because the attack surface has increased because of people working remotely. So, but there are some innovative things that are occurring. Um, one that we are working with your team on and also with Intel is, the, uh, is a thermal uh, temperature monitoring system. So if you think about with COVID, obviously one of the key indicators to uh, having COVID is your temperature and, and temperature monitoring is a key part of keeping employees safe. So we have, uh, we've worked with Intel in creating a solution that instead of costing tens of thousands of dollars, we have used some commodity cameras and commodity compute from Intel to, to, to create a very sophisticated thermal monitoring um, system. And what's interesting is that when you start creating these basic um, solutions using commodity technology, it starts opening the doors to integrating it into other systems because of what you had mentioned earlier, these open APIs that exist. So um, imagine being able to detect through temperature monitoring when you have a mass reading of multiple employees um, with high temperatures, which is an indication of, of COVID. Uh, imagine that sensor um, uh, system being connected to the building management system to perhaps turn on and off different HVAC fans so that you could, instead of um, circulating uh, the air within the building, you immediately start uh, exhausting the air in the building outside so that you're not recirculating what could be contaminated uh, air due to uh, a mass um, um, sensing of COVID in, in the building. So, it gets, it gets very, very interesting when you start thinking about those types of solutions. And again, much of it being made possible because of the commoditization of the hardware, but also because of much of the open APIs that exist. And then I think they're, uh, the industry, and again, Schneider, I think, is leading the way here. Um, they're opening up their typical um, closed ecosystems through API so that it makes it easier for solution providers to integrate those technologies together. So I think that mass temperature reading is a pretty cool one. Uh, and, and thanks for asking me about that. Yeah. And, it, and you know, it's interesting because something like that is happening because of COVID clearly, you know, but, you know, I would expect, I mean, a fever, somebody running a fever is a bad sign anyway. I mean, it, it may not be COVID, there might be other things, and this might become part of our normal operation as I walk into a building, it automatically sees whether or not I have a fever. And if I do, I don't, you know, yeah, we'll recirculate the air, but maybe we'll just lock somebody in a little man trap until we can get them out of there. Exactly. It could be integrated with digital signage so that the person is directed to go off into a, you know, a safe room or whatever. Um, it could al alert the uh, risk and compliance team in terms of a risk, depending on how severe it is and so forth. So there's a lot of possibilities and that's, um, exciting, uh, you know, from a power management per, uh, perspective, you know, when you're deploying a thermal system like this or a, a temperature monitoring system like this, it's an edge uh, use case. It's an edge uh, application that's going to require, because you're relying on it, to have a robust infrastructure around the networking, the security, the uh, power distribution, power uh, management, and so forth. So, Again, in order for these things to work, you have to have a robust ecosystem all working together. That's right. So the, and the ecosystem includes power. If you don't have power, none of the IT runs. We know that. Exactly, exactly. And that's what we like to hear at Schneider. We think that's important. So, so hey, Bob, thanks so much for sharing your perspectives with us today. I really enjoyed chatting with you. And uh, I think it's really, WWT is really in a very interesting uh, Part of the industry right now, particularly with uh, the you know the OWIG disaggregation aggregation theory. So uh, yeah. thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it, Kevin. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, thank you for the partnership. I really appreciate it, and I wish you and everyone listening to stay safe. Okay. Thanks again.